Hello. I'd like to go through a couple of things. Uh, what we're, people have to deal with nowadays is a, a varying amounts of uh, data that they have to put through from their 5D. Now, if you're using maybe two or three clips or just doing a little demo, any of these programs are basically the same. And uh, this is one of the problems. If you're coming back from, say, Africa and you've been there for four months, you have a lot of footage that you're ready to transcode. And most of it is probably already edit, um, you know, put into categories and things like that. So this is where these different programs work. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit later. The first thing I want to show you is just the various different programs that we've got. Here, we have the, ca uh, the, the E1, the Canon E1 plugin, working in the, in the Login Transfer plugin in Final Cut. Fine. Everything seems fine there. You can't really do much apart from the, uh, in the preferences here, you can set if you want it to be 444 or 422. Um, and that's fine. It, it, this is all fairly simple. One thing that is very important to do is when you're doing your presets, is to edit that so that, that when you pull it in, you can actually put in things like the original name, the camera model name, the, the clip date, and uh, also like the shooting frames per second, things like that. I, I find that massively ha handy because of what happens next, is that if you do have a whole pile of stuff here, and you're shooting, say, the 7D and the 5D, and they're both you know shooting at the same time and everything like that, and you might have formatted the cards at the same time, you've got lots of clips that have got the same names. So this will help. This helps uh, s separate that out. However, even though you have all these multiple folders and you can look at the top here and you've got, you can have lots of different EOS, you know, digital files in here and convert them all at once, they all end up in one huge big folder, which is ridiculous. So that's one problem. Anyway, as I said, I was going to talk about that later. Let's just go over the, ma the main inputs of what we've got here. E1 uh, log and transfer thing, that's fine. Magic Bullet Grinder, great interface, very, very simple. And um, uh, this MPEG, MPEG Stream Clip, which again is very quick and does it very well. Uh, again, it's a fairly simple, minimal interface. The E1 plugin is massive by comparison. Magic Blue Grinder is, is the cleanest one. But then we've got this one called 5D to RGB, which I don't know if many people know about. This allows you to do various things, and um, but take it in. But what it does do is it converts it to the absolute highest quality, which is what we'll show you next. So let me actually just pull up Nuke so I can show you straight away what we're talking about. Um, right here, I've got the um, the original. Uh, we've got the the E1 plugin that came from through the normal log and transfer process. We've got the grinder frame, and then we've got the 5D to RGB frame, and then the MPEG stream frame. Now everything looks fine. When you zoom in, you may notice a few differences here and there. Again, we're looking at number. Oh, I should have had my text box zoom in too, but we've got the original number two here. That's the E1 plugin. Number three, that's from Grinder. Number four, that's from uh, 5D to RGB, and five stream clip. Now, this is the next part, this is the important part. Put it back to the original. Have a look at those blocky things there. Okay? Now, I'm going to put the into a, a closer area here. You'll be able to see straight away that on number one, which is the uh, original, number two, you see the changes in the color there? It's the way that the algorithm that works to pull out the best out of the data. And you can straight away see that the E1 plugin gets a little bit more contrast in there, a little bit darker. and um, But you can still see there's noise in there. 3, Grinder actually does the best job, I find, of getting the highlights in a respectable area. And also the, uh, the, the darks have got a lot more detail in them. But here we go, number 4. All of a sudden, when you look at it now, you see the difference between 1, input, which is the original, 2, Canon E1. Let's skip uh, the uh, let's let's go to grinder next and let's go to the MPEG stream they've all got this same amount of, of blockiness apart from this one which is much much smoother look at the difference in the red channel look in the green channel again blue channel you can see it as well there's not so much you really really do see it in the red channel an awful lot it feels like the difference between 422 and 444 color sampling and um, you see it in Faces you see in highlights straight away. These are the normal ones, and then you get the high, the much much smoother highlights there. So there is definite well, something that again you bring them in straight in, and there's there's differences between all the different colors straight away, which is a major pain in the neck, especially when you're going through F Final Cut. Um, the 5D to RGB uh, does do a very good job of putting it in there and, and making everything. It is the slowest of all of them, but not by that much. Now, again, when you look at it here, you can see the color differences straight away. If I 
if I look at the reds, if I go to a different frame and I go to one where we've got red now, if I just bring in the original color, that's what it looks like. It's really, really, really bright. And if I bring in the E1 plugin version, you can see it's a, you, there's a bit more detail in there. Grinder, oops, the difference between Grinder and that is not much difference now. There used to be a difference with the, the way that one of them flags the um, gamma flag, which in preview mode in Final Cut is, is, is kept. You know, for instance, some of the other flags that are ignored when you, if you rotate anything in QuickTime Player and uh, you bring it into Final Cut, you'll see that it's rotated. Lovely. As soon as you hit render, it flips upside down. The rendering part ignores any of the gamma or rotation flags from QuickTime, but in the real-time RT part, doesn't. Thanks, Apple. Um, if you look at the F5D RGB, this is one thing that doesn't do very well, is that uh, the, the, the red is very, very saturated. Now, I've got another version of it over here, which was the, the there's a, in the actual program, you can see there's an output here, which goes ca uh, ca gamma flagging 2.2. It doesn't make any difference when I pull into Nuke. I think, I don't know if it's that Nuke ignores it or not, but it certainly seems to, to do it. So out of all of them, uh, I think in terms of overall speed as well, um, I find that, that this, I look at my cores, um, and they just hardly ever, they, they peak up a little bit. When I'm using Magic Bullet, they're a constant um, you know, amount there. Um, MPEG Stream Clip is very, very good at streaming. You'll find that your cores are all sitting up at the top there. With 5D to RGB, interesting, you can actually, from the command line, it's one of those command line type things and it feels very Unixy. y um, This one you can run many instances of until you build up and saturate your CPUs. Just make sure you have a nice, hard, fast, hard drive. So there you go. If I go, oh, now we're going over to the actual in and outs of it. One of the things I touched on before is that everything that comes into this log and transfer ends up in one bin, a massive pain in the neck. Because you don't want to be, if you're out in the field, you don't want to be transcoding out in the field. You want to be organizing out in the field. Um, but this makes it very difficult. Same thing with Magic Bullet Grinder. Um, it all ends up in the same place. I'd like to be able to select different you know, chunks and say, okay, all of this goes to one place, all of this goes to another place. It really, really is a pain. So, um, M Stream Clip is the only one that actually does uh, multiple destinations. Not the same for 5D to RGB. This one only does them one at a time. It, I think you can actually do a batch, but I think it's a script that you run from a command line. Something I wouldn't want to do. Um, obviously, Automator can help in these things, but it would really make it a lot better if, if, um, um, if it worked. Uh, and you had you actually had it production ready. In another part of my blog, I did say that, that the E1 plugin is just not ready. One thing that you can do is in the timeline in Final Cut, is just do a batch export and do it that way and convert over to, to ProRes 444. It's slower and it doesn't use the plugin and it's not as, as good, but you, you can do it that way and have multiple parts. Now, again, you have to be careful with the batch export in Final Cut because it's buggy as well, and you can find yourself chasing your tail with uh, the output destinations being all... You set the last one, if you go back to one of the other ones, if you've made a mistake, you'll find that it resets them all and changes them all around. It's a major bug that's annoyed me for many years. Anyway, um, so overall, I think Magic, Magic Bullet Grinder in terms of speed and, um, s speed and also uh, color fidelity uh, wins. The E1 plugin is good, but it is, uh, doesn't use your CPUs very well. Um, the, this MPEG stream clip in terms of speed wins, but in terms of color saturation, not so good. The 5D to RGB wins in terms of, if you want the best looking image, I'm sure that you could um, change, your, say, your decoding matrix to make it, um, I guess you could do that as well to flatten out those reds, um, and you can bake that gamma correction in there. But uh, uh, it, it really is if you want the highest quality, but the speed is not good. Um, I was I was able to maybe do in Magic Blit Grinder three or four clips to the one clip that was going on here. But you pay for what you get. Okay, I hope that uh, helps, and I hope it's shed some light on these multiple, multiple issues. And I bet you if there's any other ones that I've missed that's not MPEG Stream Clip or any of these ones, give me a shout. Cheers.